Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I have a very special guest joining me and she's none other than my niece, Azel. Thank you, Mosi, for having me on your channel. You're welcome. In fact, Azel is 10 years younger than me and for my parents, she's the eldest grandchild. And today she's going to lead us, uh, showing us quite a few recipes and uh, she became a very uh, well baker after all the baking she did in her young days. She used to join me making a lot of mischief in the garden. We used to bake those mud cakes and uh, decorating it with the fresh flowers. But the only thing was not possible is to eat them. <laughs> but now she became one of a very good baker. Now she's going to take us through uh, to a few recipes and I'm going to hand you all over to Azel. Thank you. Hi guys, I'm going to now make some banana pudding. Uh, this is a much requested um, recipe from uh, the viewers. So I've got um, two cups of multi-purpose flour, cake flour, and um, a pinch of salt. Sorry, that fell. Pinch of salt. And I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Mix that up. And I'm going to add a full tablespoon of ghee. Again, rubbing it into the flour to have like breadcrumb consistency. So my ghee is uh, uh, absorbed into the flour and I've got a teaspoon full of lemon juice which I'm adding to tap water. So in Johannesburg our water is almost as equivalent to ice water in Durban. Um, I'm going to add this to my dough and I'm going to use as required, the water as required. So it might not be the full cup of water, it might just be a little bit less than that. <laughs> so just added a little bit more water and then we will mix the dough. The dough is ready. As you can see, it's quite soft. Now I'm going to let this dough rest for at least an hour to two hours. And that is the secret in having flake, flaky banana puddies. Um, if the dough is not rested, then it's not going to be... Um, easy to roll out into the thin sheets that I'm going to show you later. So that's the dough, nice and soft, and it needs to rest. I'll show you what the rested dough looks like, if you can see how this one is, and I'll show you what the rested dough looks like when we come back. So for the resting process, I'm taking the dough, placing it into a packet, and I'm sealing it, tying it up, and then I will rest it. You can either rest it in the fridge overnight if you wish, or you can just leave it out um, on a uh, you know open surface, just so that it can rest and um, become pl more pliable. 
So in preparation for today's uh, banana puri, I made a dough earlier and I just want to show you the difference in color. So this is the rested dough and this is what the, the dough looks like now. As it rests and um, becomes more pliable, then it will change its color. So um, it will be easier to, it might just stick to the packet like on, in this one here, but it's not a train smash. You just gather it all out and um, roll it into your required portions. Okay, I've taken out the dough from the packet, uh, from the, rest, the resting process, and I'm going to roll it out. Now, I just want to tell you a little bit of, about what's going to happen next. So I'm gonna make these into um, round balls. So we can either make it into nine pieces and we can layer them into three rotis um, in each, or we're gonna make them into eight pieces and put four pieces into, four rotis into each um, uh, banana puri, or you can put all eight into one roll. Now the reason why I've told you that you're gonna make it into different quantities is the bigger the quantity, the bigger the banana puri. And um, um, the flakiness you will see as we roll them out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make um, eight rotis and I'm going to make them four each. Uh, so each banana puri will have four layers. And I've just got some flour on the side that I'm going to use to, um, to keep the dough from sticking. So as my auntie said, she has her favorite uh, rolling pin. I've also got my own favorite rolling pin that I brought my own. I'm done with my first roti uh, or my first layer of the banana puri. I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to make the rest of the eight. Okay, so I've done the eight rotis and the next step is going to be um, layering them in batches of four. So I've got um, melted ghee and I've got my mazina which I'm going to use and I'll show you the process now. So first I will spread out some ghee and this is just normal ghee, vegetable ghee. Same process. And this just helps with keeping the banana, uh, the, the flakes of the pastry separate. This is my third one. What you could also do here is color the, um, the dough. If you want to have different colors, you can color the dough. And um, 
separate them with like one of the clear one and a, and a colored one in between or you can have all colored um, flakes. And then this is going to be the last one. If it's not of equal size, all you do is you just spread them around. The dough becomes very, very, very pliable. Then you just seal the edges. So what I do next is I just keep it aside and I've got clean paper here. So I'm just going to leave it on my cling and do the exact same process with the next set. So I've made um, my two doughs ready. So it's four uh, rotis rolled up. And now I am going to roll this into maybe three or four times its size. And this is where we're going to get the thin layers for the banana puri. It's going to be Don't worry about the shape when we roll it all out. It will come right. Don't worry about little pieces that you are going to have folding around. Once it's rolled up, you will cover it all up. Okay, you can see this is like almost three times the size it was. to try and keep it as thin as possible. And then you can see how the dough can stretch from that little piece, it stretched quite a bit. And it's easy to work with. As we go, it's getting thinner. I'm just dusting off some flour so it doesn't stick to the surface. So all we're doing is stretching out this dough to be as thin as possible. The thinner you go here, the flake here, your banana puddies will come out. Okay. I think this is thin enough. Okay. So again, the process will be um, ghee and mazina. So we'll Sprinkle Mazina over the ghee. Okay, so for the edge of the, um, the puri, banana puri, you are going to seal it with a little bit of water and flour and that will just prevent it from opening when you are frying it. Or else they will just break in the frying pan. Okay. So I'm just going to leave that edge so I'll seal that entire edge with some water and flour. 
that came from the sea now. So for the paste, I've just put a little bit of um, water and flour. Mix it with my finger. And just spread it out. Just so that it doesn't open on the edges. Okay, so we're going to roll it and I'm going to start from one end and we're going to roll up. So when you start rolling, just make the center parts like bigger because if you go smaller then it just crunches when you're frying. So you just want a little bit of uh, um, room when you are frying. So I'm just rolling to the edge. So some people like to cut it into a square, I just don't. Do all of that purely because I don't want to waste. I um, use the entire dough and the edges can still be eaten instead of just being thrown away. So that's just what I do. You can cut it into a square if you wish but I don't. Okay I'm just going to put a little bit more flour to seal the edges and first dough is ready. So from this I'm just going to let it rest for a little longer on my cling and I'm going to cut it into pieces and generally I get around about two dozens out of a roll like this. Okay so the, I've rolled out the, the two uh, doughs and um, I cling wrapped it while I was busy with the last one. So I'm just going to cut out the edge so that it looks a little bit neat. And just keep that aside. And I'm going to slice these in, let's say, about a finger, finger piece uh, size. And I'm just going to cut that along. So that's a width of one knuckle. Yeah. Just keep the pieces separated. You can make them thicker if you want. I'll make a thick one just to show how it fries. You can keep them thin, thick. It just depends on what you want to do with them. Okay, so I'm just going to push that to a side and I'm going to roll out each one. Now I think a lot of people get um, this confused so what I do is I just start from the center roll it out on the edge towards the edge and look at this the way I'm rolling so I'm not doing it the that way I'm doing it on the side that I've rolled it so again it's just a little bit of thingy. And you can see already it's starting to flake. And then I keep it aside and I do them all in the same way. Okay, so now I'm ready to fry the banana puri. 
out of that roll of banana puri, I cut out 30 pieces of um, individual banana puris. So I've got my oil on, on medium heat. I've got a colander with a plate to drain out the oil on, um, uh, to, you know, after it fries, I'll place it on there and then we'll drain it further um, onto tissue paper. So I'm going to start with my first banana puri into the oil. I try and work with individual ones because the process is quite important from here for it to open. So as you can see that's open and then I just flip it on its side and you see it automatically opens up. Not much effort from the fork. Then I turn it around and it does its own thing. And we can move on to the next one. Exactly the same. Just keeping an eye on this one, turning it around every now and then. And the dough will still remain as white as it can. The minute you start to see it's turning golden brown, you must know it's time for it to, get, uh, to be moved out of the oil. But you don't want it to get to golden brown. You can also just push it under the oil for it to fry. And because the, the puri is so, or the roti, individual rotis are so thin, you can move it out of the frying process quite quickly and place it into the rack for draining. Again here, it just opens it up. And if it doesn't open as you wish, then you can use your fork to open it up a little more. And then we'll add another one. Moving this to the side. Turn it around. This one is turning golden brown. Try and drain out as much as the oil as you can. And the heat is on real low, low, low heat. So you don't want it to fry fast. As soon as it starts to fry fast, it will crisp up and it won't open as nicely as it's doing here. Oh, that is fine. Okay, so I fried the first batch um, and I've made 30 uh, banana puris and this is what they look like. So I've laid a cooling rack with uh, some uh, uh, tissue paper or kitchen towel. And I'm going to let this drain. So now the normal process that I would do is allow this to drain for a day. So if I'm making it tonight, then the next day I will, um, I will decorate it. And the reason for that is that there's still going to be a lot of oil that's going to come out. So if you can see that, there's still oil in it. So this process of draining it just allows that oil to seep out. But just for decoration purpose and uh, for time, I'm going to show you a few as to how I decorate them. But the process is that you just allow it to drain. The banana puris are quite fragile, so when you're handling them, just handle them with care or else you'll have all 
crumbles. So again, on those edges that I said, I don't cut out the edgings, you might not get a full, well spaced out or spread out uh, banana pudding, but it's still edible. People can still eat that. And I've used the colander just to uh, keep the fried banana puris until I transfer it onto the tray. Okay, then I've got different colored, um, so these are almonds and this is also blue almonds. I've got red almonds and these are my desiccated coconuts or coconut sli uh, uh, slivers. I've got yellow, green and red. So what I would do is take a banana puri, take some icing sugar and sprinkle a little bit of icing sugar over it. Again, just remember that the banana puris are very, very flaky. Just be careful how you deal with them. So let's just put some coconut. And you can just do a dash off some gold dust. We'll do another one. This time we'll put some green. Again, some gold dust. And then I'll just make the third one. And let's put the yellow. So what you can also do is you can make some syrup, different colored syrup, and you can drizzle over the uh, banana puri. But just remember that when you drizzle the syrup onto the banana puri, that it's still going to drip down. So it's best that if you are going to put a syrup on it as decoration, that you allow it to, say, uh, to stand on a tissue paper so that it drains uh, down. Do not soak these into syrup. If you're going to soak them into syrup, they're just going to become soggy because the banana puri is so uh, light and fluffy. So here we go. This is the banana puri, fin the final product. It is a very lengthy process to make the banana puri, very many steps involved, but the end reward is worth it and the taste, you will never um, go wrong with it. So yeah, thank you very much. Enjoy and um, hope you guys try the recipes out and give us feedback. Thank you. Okay, now we have come to the end of this wonderful evening of baking. I uh, want to thank Azel very much to come through to show the viewers all the favorites that they actually uh, requested for. Thank you very much, Hazel. You're welcome, Mosi. Everything is looking so delicious. We are really going to have a feast. And uh, hopefully, for all these recipes, if Hazel can get uh, 500 likes, so we'll get her back before Diwali to show us more recipes.